this presentation is part of the 2Gen Collaborative. Um, the 2Gen Collaborative is a network of partners that are working to address needs of the whole family. Uh, their mission is to grow and foster partnerships among providers interested in whole family services by facilitating opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer learning and professional development and advocating for systemic changes that bring about positive impacts on families and children. So today is a peer-to-peer -peer learning day, um, and we are going to hear from Aisha Wilburn from the Centers, who has some great opportunities available for uh, pregnant women and their families. And when we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, um, many people were very interested in this. And so we decided to make it a, a lunch and learn opportunity and invited uh, the community to learn more about it and to, and, and to ask any questions. And we are also recording this and it'll be available uh, for your colleagues as well. So um, as well as if you were gonna take a ton of notes, you'll, you'll have that information as uh, too. So I am gonna go ahead and turn this over to Aisha from the centers. Thank you, Laureen. Um, hi, my name is Aisha Wilburn. I'm from the Centers for Families and Children, and I'll be speaking about our services that we have at the centers today. I have a presentation, and um, just to um, warn you, I am going to go off camera because my internet does not like when I present and speak at the same time. So if anyone has any questions, you can either put them in the chat or you can save them for after because I will not be speaking long. Okay, thank you. Okay. Grace, can you confirm that you can see the first slide? Yep, everything looks perfect. All right, awesome. Okay, so good afternoon. My name is Aisha Wilbur, and I am the director of Two Gen Strategy at the Centers. And, and in this role, I manage the Center's Basic Needs Resource Center, and I'll be discussing, like I said, one of the programs that we have um, at the centers there. And um, before I do that, I would be remiss if I did not also go over the other service we have. So I'll just briefly review those. So the Centers is a multi-service agency and we have a wide variety of services for individuals and families. We take a no wrong door approach and um, because it is more likely than not that families will have access to more than one service or need more than one service um, while they seek care here. This is especially important for um, when you take care of multi-generational families um, within the two-gen framework or pregnant families that we work with. And all of our health and wellness sites are federally qualified health centers and for convenience, all of these services are um, given at our Gordon Square location on the west side, but you can find multiple services at any of our locations. And so our early learning services that we have range from six weeks to five years. We have several options for families uh, to pay so they can keep childcare as, as affordable as possible because we all know childcare is very expensive and um, it's a high quality uh, childcare service. So um, all of our sites are four-star rated and um, the centers also has support services, which is part of a community collaborative for family assistance and stabilization. And we have home visiting services, which are curriculum based and they use an early Head Start and Head Start framework. Our El Barrio program is our workforce development line of service and it is free. And it also has everything that you need in Spanish as well. And um, they have short-term career training so you can receive your training or certification and start earning a paycheck very, very quickly, which is important. And we also have several partnership with local businesses who want to hire our graduates. And there are also programs within the centers that partner with the early learning program and behavioral health program that we have where you can train for your certification and then work at the centers. And finally, we have our newest service line, which is our residential youth program. It's a collaboration between Cleveland Christian Home 
for youth and the centers, and it's for youth who are um, in custody right now awaiting placement, and they have experienced a trauma and abuse and just um, a lot of um, very challenging life experiences. And so they are um, sent here, and it's uh, a home that is open 24-7. They receive everything that the centers has to offer, including dental and um, primary care and behavioral health care and counseling. And they also live there, and we call it T-Suites, and it has been very successful. So now I'm going to go over my department. It's called the Basic Needs Resource Center or the BNRC. And we are not a line of service because we service the whole centers, but we also um, serve the community. And um, you do need to be a client for some of our services, um, just a few, but everything we offer um, besides that is open to the community. So I'll just quickly go over these. We have the perinatal resource program, which I'll be re reviewing today. And um, there's adopt a family program where it's a holiday program. It's the capstone of our year. And um, we serve about 325 families every December and provide gifts for adults and children and houseware items and just a good time. Uh, we have the BNRC, which is the traditional BNRC, which is available for center clients only and staff. And um, this is so clients who come in the centers and need either crisis services, food, household item, clothing, uh, personal care products, transportation, can get what they need while they're here so they can focus on why they came into our doors for the first place. And it also helps staff who um, need to serve these clients because they don't have to spend time looking for those services in the community. They can just send a referral to the Basic Needs Resource Center and get what they need. Uh, there is also the Access to Wellness program, which is a basic need services service program for individuals with serious mental illnesses. It's um, through the Adams Board. The Centers is the fiscal and enrollment agent, and um, those adults only, but uh, it provides services to make sure these people are stabilized when they um, are released from jail or released from the hospital. And so they can make their, um, um, make sure that they are healing property and they can get the care and services they need from their case manager. There's also our Sinners Market, which is a collaboration between us and the Cleveland Food Bank. We run those from April through September, and they are twice a month, once at our Gordon Square location and once at our Gordon Square, I'm um, sorry, Uptown location. And um, those are also open to the community. And we have miscellaneous services in my department. We have an electric car that is available for um, center's clients or center staff. It's available for short-term use or for quick appointments or for families who um, have, you know, transportation breakdowns and they need to um, take their children back and forth to school or either to our le early learning centers or to their school while their car is being fixed or for staff who need to, you know, run a quick errand and they do not have access to a car at that time. And the service is free. We also um, help our clients apply for the Aisha, you seem to Aisha. Cleveland Food Bank and pay the and Uber for healthcare providers that we use to their homes to their uh -oh, to their uh, appointments if necessary. So I'm going to be discussing our perinatal resource center, which is part of the basic needs center, basic needs resource center that I have. And the whole point of the perinatal program is to improve the birth and child outcomes for families. And this is um, targeted directly towards families of color and black families. We um, take all families, we are very inclusive, but we really wanna focus on African-American families and families of color because the infant mortality rate for those families are two times as higher um, than the total rate for Cuyahoga County. So those families are in crisis. So we really wanna make sure we focus on them. And I have a staff of three, including myself, so maybe three and a half. Um, we have a women's health coordinator, a community health worker, and a housing support specialist. And um, currently we have 235 active 
clients in the program at various stages and capacities. And we use different strategies that are unique to each family, but every family that comes into this program has access to all of our center services. And um, home visiting is one strategy. We partner with our early learning program, uh, their home visiting um, through Early Head Start and Head Start. We also have a Help Me Grow program at the centers and we have a um, part of the Better Better Help uh, Partnership Hub that we have for our behavioral health clients as well. So why housing? Um, research has shown that safe, stable, and quality housing is essential for everybody. That's um, pretty much a no-brainer, but affordable housing is even tougher to come by. It's one of the primary needs that I hear from clients that come through the Basic Needs Resource Center. I'm sure you guys have heard that people cannot find, find affordable quality housing um, because it's a shortage in Ohio and Cuyahoga County. And to Add to that, when we serve clients who are pregnant or have young children, um, housing instability increases their poor birth outcomes or the outcomes for children. And this is also especially true for families of color who have been systematically impacted by the housing market and the history in Cuyahoga County. So we have a lot of factors working against the population that we serve. And this slide kind of sums up why housing is one of the many strategies used to combat infant and maternal mortality. It contributes to disparities in social determinants and contributes to lower health outcomes, like I said, across the board for the entire family. And um, the negative impact for poor housing and um, everything contributes to stress, uh, maternal health and infant health and children as they grow within this environment. And so if you intersect that with the experience of um, poverty, being a woman, being black and being, being pregnant, it's a recipe for disaster. And so these programs I'm going to discuss now is um, they are trying to target this very specific population to mitigate the um, infant and maternal mortality crisis. It's just one strategy that is used in Cuyahoga County and there are some promising um, results from them. So the first program is called Healthy Beginnings Homes, it, Healthy Beginnings at Home. It was established as a collaborative to sort of do research. It's a research project actually, um, in the hope that there will be outcomes that we can use in um, policy and um, you know, across the board for state, local and federal um, rules and regulations, and also for managed care organizations and um, Medicaid organizations and housing providers to show that providing the service helps everybody. And it questions and tests the role that the lack of affordable housing has in health disparities and social determinants with the assumption that it will save money in the long term because that's the you know that's what everyone wants to to do to save money but also save lives and that's where you know our focus is to save lives for both women and children and the program has existed in Ohio for a couple of years, I think uh, three or four years now, but Cuyahoga County is um, more one of the most recent counties to be brought on to join Ohio in the study. And um, we started in August and uh, we are almost full with one caseload and the outcomes so far have been extremely promising. So criteria to participate in the program they're not much, but I can tell you with honesty that is, um, it's very difficult to enter the program just because you need to be less than 21 weeks pregnant. So individuals sh need to find out by about this program very early in their pregnancy, and you have to be at least 21 weeks at the time of enrollment. And that means once you come to us, you have to be income eligible and you have to be experiencing housing instability, which I've listed here. And um, since we started in August, we have families that fall into all of these categories in multiple categories and have experienced these categories multiple times. So the program itself has two main services. It's the housing intervention and the housing stability. The housing intervention is the housing piece you, um, the families are assisted in finding housing, housing and Eden assist us with that, or families can go out on their own and find housing and then landlords and property managers can apply um, with Eden to make sure that they um, are certified to provide this 
service and families receive rental subsidies for the 24 months that they are enrolled in the housing program. And uh, at the end, they can apply for a voucher or they can you know, pay for the rent on their own. So for 24 months, the program will pay for their rent. And during this time, they also receive case management services. And uh, six months before the end of the program, there is a step down period where the housing support specialist helps the families determine how they're going to pay rent going forward, if they can pay rent going forward or apply for a voucher. So like I said before, many of the women that come through our doors through this program fall into multiple housing instability categories. So in addition to other barriers and health needs and social service needs, they, they need help just, you know, navigating the whole system because the system is already set up to make people frustrated and not get through it. So that's where the housing support specialist comes in to help them through that process to keep them calm, to keep them encouraged, because it could be, it could be tedious. And again, these women are pregnant. So we want to make sure the stress is reduced as much as possible because the whole point is to make sure that they have a healthy pregnancy, full term, they're healthy and the baby is healthy. So they receive this case management through the whole 24 months that they are participating in the program. And the housing support specialist you know, um, talks to the landlord for them. They do landlord advocacy. We provide utility assistance and care coordination. And each of these is tailored to the needs of the families because not everybody has these needs. And sometimes they have very unique needs that we need to find resources and solutions for. And so, you know, when they come to us, a lot of them have had situations with housing before where they cannot rent anymore because they have bad credit or poor credit, or they have a history in the criminal justice system, or someone in their household has a history in a criminal justice system. And these two alone can prevent them from renting somewhere. Quality. Again, the emphasis is on quality, safe, and affordable. So there are lots of places out there that you can rent, but lots of places that we would never put these families in. So we want to make sure that when we place them, they're in places that we would want to live and that we will feel comfortable leaving these families. And also, um, electrical bills from past rental places is a huge barrier for these families. You know, you have uh, electrical bills that are in the hundreds and we've seen thousands that they have let go and they cannot get the utilities turned on in their name until these are paid. So we are helping them, you know, find resources. We are helping them pay those things and that can take time. And all of these services are person-centered, they are trauma-informed, and they are consistent with the Housing First and Harm Reduction Policy. And um, the centers really focuses on those pieces. So we stay at the pace of the client. We have resources at our disposal. If you know the, the family you know um, goes through hardship, we can pause and stop and refer them to any service within the center. And so that's the first program. The second program, keeping with the theme of safe, affordable housing for pregnant women and women who have um, young children, is the First Steps Housing Program. And this program throws eligible applicants a lifeline, pretty much through direct financial support, because sometimes all people need is money, money to pay their bills. That's all they need. And that's what this program is for. It isn't long term. It's scheduled to end in December of this year, but I can say the funding that we have available right now for while I'm giving this presentation should be enough. And we have a community health worker and the women's housing coordinator that are currently processing applications. Mm -hmm. And so families who qualify and are experiencing housing instability can have their rent or utilities paid or their rent and their utilities paid one time through the lifetime of the program. And the program is open to the community. And um, the only caveat is that we cannot pay a mortgage and the services must be in their name. And so far this program began in September of 2024 and we spent about $20,000 um, to help the community so far. So anyone, like I said, who receives these particular services in the perinatal program 
also receive the services of oh, the whole centers. Great, so once you complete your intake, you are part of the center's ecosystem and you have access to everyone and everything that we have. So if you need something else while you are working with our um, women's health coordinator, she will refer you. And this is not just a, a number or an email address. Um, our number to receive services is 325-WELL, but we very rarely use that in my program because we believe in warm handoffs. So we are contacting the person that can help you right then and connecting you directly to that person. So we know that you are receiving those services and you weren't you know, going to five different people for the services and getting um, frustrated. So we um, make sure that you get what you need. And um, that's it. This is my uh, email address, speaking of emails. If anyone has any questions or you think you have clients that may be um, eligible for either of these programs or the center services period or anything in my um, uh, list of programs, you can email me here and I can, you know, have a conversation with you or refer you to one of my specialists. We, I have a staff of six that work in various departments in my department that can and answer questions and help. And that's it for me. I will take questions if there are any. There are a couple questions, Aisha, in the chat, and then I'm sure there'll be more as we're going through. Okay. Um, one of the first questions is, where is the BNRC located? The BNRC is located at 4500 Euclid Avenue. That is the center's administrative office. We are in the basement because it's a, a warehouse situation where we have household items and food and other stuff that we store there. Right now we're getting out our winter things, uh, the coats, the shoes, the boots, the socks. So um, we're in constant stage of array and disarray. So we are located at 4500 Euclid. I can say it's not a place that um, the public can come and go and pick up things. It's designed for staff um, to pick up things. The way it works is that staff shop on our online um, shopping system. It's just like amazon.com. They see what's in stock. They put it in their cart. They check out. Um, no money is exchanged. Um, it's all fake money. And then I have staff and volunteers who prepare the boxes, the bags for the clients. Um, and it's either delivered to the center site we have home visitors that deliver to the homes or a staff can come up and pick pick those up. And when you say staff, that would be the staff from the Centers for Families and Children or could people outside also use it? For the traditional basic needs resource center, it is strictly for the individuals that receive services from the centers. However, if there is a situation where there is a crisis or someone that is in need, I will never turn anyone away. I do not believe in not giving food or formula to anyone. So if there's a situation where all other avenues have been exhausted and you remember this presentation, you can give me a call. Um, the next question was about the presentation. Would you be able to um, share a copy of it so we can send it out with the, when the recording is ready? I can. Okay. And then what is the best way? I know you listed your um, your email address, but when is the, what is, how is the best way to get in contact if somebody does have somebody that fits their criteria? Is it just your email or are there other ways? I would say my email is the best way. Um, you can also email BNRC at the centersohio.org and that goes out to all of my staff and uh, whatever your question is, someone will answer it. Um, that is mo the most appropriate and get you what you need. That was BNRC? At the centersohio.org. Okay, I'm putting that in the chat. Okay, so I'm getting to the next. Got that one, got that one. Um, so with the first program, it's only for women under 20 weeks pregnant. Is that correct? 21 weeks. They have to be 21 weeks when they get to the centers. So Neighborhood Leadership Institute, and I skipped over that, I'm sorry, is the intake organization that completes the initial intake for women and they determine if you're initially eligible for the program. And so you can be six weeks, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, but by the time you get to us, you have to be less than 21 weeks pregnant. And that's because we 
are um, mandated to get the women housed before they give birth. That's the whole point of the program is to make sure their housing stable before they give birth. And um, so we want to move through that process very, very quickly. Aisha, this is Nyla. Hi. Um, so I'm thinking when you send out the PowerPoint, perhaps, you know, it would be possible to be able to send out the partner letter that has the survey monkey um, and some basic information to anyone who is on this Zoom or who is interested in referring some moms who are under nine, who are up to 19 weeks pregnant, um, because there's actually a survey monkey link um, that a worker, it is not to go out to families. Um, the worker who is working with the family um, is to fill out that information. And so if you have a particular client that you would like to refer, you could simply um, go on the link, it's a survey monkey, and type in their basic information, such as their name, their birth date, um, their weeks of gestation, um, various other basic information like that. It's quite, um, it's quite simple. And we will receive that and be able to process their pre-screening. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nyla. Yeah, and I can put that right in the PowerPoint, including the QR code. Okay, great. Okay, regarding the first step program, is the rental payment for an existing for an existing lease, or does assistance also go towards if a mom is looking to move into a location? Yes, um, it can go towards either. Uh, the only caveat is that we need a current lease, so she will have to have signed the lease, and we need a W nine from the property owner, property management company, or the landlord. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the next question, can we refer the immigrants and refugees pregnant women eligible for the program? You can for the First Steps Housing Program, but you have to be a citizen of the United States for Healthy Beginnings at Home. Okay, the next question, um, can people participate in the housing program without participating in all the other programs? Absolutely. Okay. Is there a waiting list? Okay, so for Healthy Beginnings at Homes, there is not a waiting list, but there is a, um, I guess, a limit to the number of clients that we can enroll. And um, once we reach that limit, um, the program is uh, paused until the end of the, the grant period. And um, it's also limited by the number of people on the caseload for the housing support specialist. So right now I just have one. So I think that we're going to um, pause the enrollments until we hire an additional person. And I am, you know, completing interviews right now. So if you know anybody, look on the centers and apply. Um, but yeah, so because the services are so intensive, we don't want to overwhelm one person. And so if you go to Neighborhood Leadership Institute and you fill out that information, you may be referred to the centers, but we may not be able to complete the enrollment. Okay. And is that for the first program or the second program? That's for the first program. <clears throat> okay. And are there deadlines? I thought saw the one was, was there a December deadline on one? Yes, for first steps, there is a December deadline for it, um, and that's just because the funding is um, it runs out December thirty first. We have to use all the funding by December thirty first, and I would like to have you know all bills paid, all rents paid by mid December. Okay. Um, all right. Another question: If the family has small children under five and not pregnant, would they still qualify for housing? It depends. For the First Steps housing program, you need to be pregnant or have a child under the age of one. Right. I'm also going to put my information in the chat um, if anyone has any questions regarding a pre-screen for the Healthy Beginnings at Home. I'm going to just go ahead and put my phone number and my email in the chat. Right. I think I'm caught up right now with all questions, Aisha, unless somebody else has a question to put in here. I think we've answered everybody's question. Um, we will. Oh, Keisha, Keisha raised her hand. So I'm going <laughs> to. There you go. 
Don't skip over Keisha. Nope. Sorry about that. Okay. My question is for families who have signed up for the First Steps housing with that funding uh, or the deadline being the in December, do they have to reapply and are they eligible to reapply for continued service uh, the beginning of the year? Right now, I don't know the answer to that question because as far as I know, and we've been told that this is a one-time funding opportunity, it may be extended. But as far as I know, once the money has been spent by the end of the year, that's it for the program. Now, if they provide additional funding, which would be great for the community, I will um, reach out and make sure that people can apply again. Oh, Stephanie, I see your hand raised. Yes, hi. Um, good afternoon. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to join the first time, so I'm a little behind. I'm not sure if you answered this already. Um, but in regards to clients who have who I have sent the link for them to apply for the first steps housing assistance, how long is that response time? The response them? time um from me is usually within 48 hours. And what I do is I acknowledge their email that they apply and I also send them what they need to send us. So that is a release form, a uh proof of employment or proof of wages or a no income form, also a W-9 that they need to have their landlord filled out and everything else they need to send to us. And so that's a proof of birth letter or the child that's under one or anything else they need. So they can be gathering all that information. And when I receive that packet, I send it right over to my staff. Thank you. Okay, so just making sure you'll you'll respond back to them. So it's just a matter of myself being a care coordinator, just following up with the client to ensure that you receive um, their application and then you told them what they need. Mm -hmm. yep. So for their, what they need is a release form, W-9 if they have a landlord, you said proof of birth. So would they need like their social security and for any other children that they have? Because a I lot of my clients are are currently pregnant so they have other children, but some are currently pregnant as well. Yes, I need a proof of pregnancy. Um, okay. Um, and they can send their my chart or their uh, ultrasound with the date on it. That's fine. Okay. And then any employment information they need as well, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And if they are not employed, I have a, a no income letter that I attach that they can fill out. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sure. Hey, we had a couple more questions coming, Aisha. Um, <clears throat> what do you need from landlords for funding with rent? I know you mentioned W-9 and a lease. Is there anything else? No, we just need a current signed lease and we need a W-9. Okay. And the next question, can you please repeat which program participants need to be citizens for? The Healthy Beginnings at Home program. And is there a way to send the program names, phone numbers, and emails to us? I think we're going to do that through the, um, with the presentation. Yes, I will do that. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for Aisha? Really quick, Aisha, I'm sorry. Um, I have a client who's currently expecting, um, right now she's, in a um a shelter with her and her daughter but she is currently pregnant um if i send her over the link you said the response time is 48 hours mm -hmm. for her is there like do you have like clients that you have as priority or is it or is it just as you receive the um applications your response is still the 48 hours yeah, as I receive the applications, I send out the email. So I check the applications uh, once a day and I send out a batch BCC email with everything I need. So if you apply today, you will get a response from me tomorrow with an email saying, thank you for applying. And this is what you need to send back to me. Okay. And if she's currently like looking for housing, if she finds some something, would she like notify you or do I have to notify you that she's found something? Because she doesn't have, a landlord so she of course can't complete that w9 yeah once she finds her housing she will work with the community health worker or the women's health coordinator and they will help her and walk her through those first steps okay thank you
You're welcome. Okay. Um, and I, and I, might have missed this, I apologize. You mentioned a program that's ending in December. You have to be pregnant for that one as well, or is that for any parent that's looking for a for a, with a child? Yeah, for the First Steps Housing Program, you need to be pregnant or have a child under one. Okay, and that's the one who funding's ending? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Question. So I sent over one on um, to First Step Housing on 10-1, mm -hmm. and my patient says she still hasn't heard anything back. I told her to like check her junk email and stuff, but she still hasn't heard anything back is what she's telling me. That's okay. what I'm going to ask, was you sending it out to the patients or out to us? So yeah, I have had a few bounce back emails. So okay. if her email bounced back, then she wouldn't get it. But if you can send me her name in my email, I can look to see what's going on. I think I wrote down your email. Which one? Is it Aisha Wilburn? That's you. Aisha dot Wilburn at the centers, Ohio dot org. Okay. No problem. The chat. Thank you. Mm hmm. Oh, one more thing. Um, does the funding take long for the landlords to get so we would know, just in case they ask? No, with my department, especially with the practical resource uh, resources, our turnaround time is uh, we aim for a week or two weeks. And so the way our checks are processed is that process at the centers is that we have to submit our documentation to our accounts payable partner by 10 o'clock on Tuesday. So if I get everything I need before that time, the landlord can receive a check that Friday. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure.